Welcome to the first part of what is going to be three videos about shelling and creating things from Fort DeSoto in Pinellas County, Florida. Fort DeSoto is awesome. And it's it's kind of like a like a J or an L-shaped island, sort of. And you get out there over a causeway from their boat launch. You can actually take a ferry across to Shell Key or to Egmont Key. There's campgrounds there, and there's the historic fort, and there's also multiple beaches, including a dog beach. So Fort DeSoto has a lot to offer for anybody going to spend an afternoon over there at the park. It's really great. So today we're going to start off at Fort DeSoto South. Now, on the day of that I did this, I actually started at Fort DeSoto North, but for purposes of today and the creation of things, I'm going to show you Fort DeSoto South first. So welcome and enjoy. Okay, I'm still at Fort DeSoto. I have moved my van from the North Beach area down to the South parking lot for the South Beach area near the pier. You can see the parking lot's quite a bit bigger and behind those trees is where we're headed out by the fishing pier. The water's just past there. Let's go out. I can't see it behind all these palm trees <clears throat> but up there is part of the fort for Fort DeSoto you can actually get a really good view from up there too and on the back side of that big hill uh, down toward where that building is you make a left and you can walk along uh, the back side of the battery. You can see where the gun turrets are, all kinds of cool stuff. But we're not going that way. We're going that way. Because on the other side of those trees is the ocean. Ha <laughs> ha. See all this down here? This is all of our little shells and things that they use for landscaping. Some of it's modern, some of it's fossils. So again, if you have a bad day at the beach, can show the ends of the parking lot and just for fun that's a fossil of a moon snail Semenia horse conch oh gosh there's a hermit crab living in there a little dry guy Wish I could remember the name of that one, but I know it. It's in my other fossil book at home, so I'll look it up. There's an olive. What other goodies here? here? Ooh. Hey. There's a little piece of horse conch there. And one of those boring turret snails. Another one of those. So yeah, if I don't find anything on the beach, I guess I'll hit the parking lot and look for fossils and old stuff. Cool. Alright. See if there's anything different on this end of the beach. Half of an apple murex. Nice white scallop. A little hinged coquina. There's a pretty 
cow go. Another little baby mirror. So cute. And man, look at the size of that guy. He would have been really cool. Got an auger. And another coquina. Hey, there's different stuff here. That's cool. Oh, look at that color. Like an orange stripe. That's awesome. Wow, so this end of the island is quite different. There's a calico. There's one too. Look at those colors. Wow. Nice. And I've already found a couple of tiny murexes. Ooh, there's one of my purple guys I need to finish with a little tree. Wow, there's a murex too. Got him rinsed. Oyster growing in there, yep. Pretty cool. There's a piece of a tulip too. Wow. Looks like Mirax is hanging out down here. Here's a big piece of one right here. And a little hinged clamp shut. Tiny spiny blue box. Other goodies here. There we go. Got a little shell. Got most of an apple murex. You can see the inside, which I love. And we got a serif here. Now the water is a little tougher to see through down here. It's dark for some reason, I'm not sure why. No, oh, I just saw Sarah fall through. There he is. Ooh, there's another one. And an auger. And there's little hinged coquinas all over the place. Yay! Let's get down here and look. Another auger. Another serif. Another serif. Another serif. There's a hinged coquina, another auger, a button snail. Wow. I'm glad I came down here. Nice white scallop. <laughs> little tiny auger right there. Nice scallop here. Um, got a little camp for this guy here. Wow, this is a good spot to stop. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, that is an alive Apple Murex. You see that the uh, operculum is quite a bit different than on a banded tulip. It's a lot more round shaped, almost sort of like a, oh, like what chestnut turbans have, but just not the big thick. That's a really pretty example of one, though. And we don't want to bother him too much, so I'll just put you there and do your little snail thing, buddy. Coquina. And some more little augers with barnacles on them, which those will come right off when I start cleaning. So, wow. Doing great in the tiny's department here, jeez. Oh, I think he just closed himself. Sorry, pal. Okay. There you go. There you go.
Oh, big giant oyster over there. Will it pop off? Oh, part of it did. Cool. And there's a white scale up there. So yeah, different finds, a lot more fun. Wow, this spot is great for the little shells. And I mean, even look at these little tiny murexes. <gasps> that is adorable. Aren't those darling? Oh. Another dark auger here. Yeah, gosh, I can barely turn my head without seeing more than I want. What's this one? Ooh, that's a really nice bright red. Yes, there's some oyster stuck to it, but that's what the color on the back looks like, so the color on the front's gonna be great when all that junk's off of it. No. Another apple murex. Wow. Didn't realize this was such a good spot for them. It's a hinge cross by Venus, but it's still shut up tight. Got some more fun stuff. There's a little hinged kitten paw. You not find that very often. Usually they're broken in half. And a little chestnut turban. Oh, he's just missing his tip a little on the top there. An olive. A serith. And an auger. Auger's right here. And literally just steps from where I got off the ramp get down onto the sand. Ah, oh, there's a shame. Broken nutmeg. Love the insides of those guys. They're so neat. He's in pretty tough shape. What other things do we have here? A little Sarath shell. Another broken nutmeg. And that is a chestnut turban all covered with Fun stuff. Oh, looks like the tip off of a fossil shell. Wow. It's pretty good down here on the end. I've been here before, but I don't think I found this many murexes last time. Ooh. There's a little crossbar Venus here. Hinged. Sweet. Awesome. That's literally the ramp I walked down to get to this section of beach. I mean, wow. Like, how nice is it to have that stuff just right here by the end where I stopped? Super cool. Alright, so there's this tiny little point right here. The sand comes out. And it's behind these big... I'm not sure what this used to be. Maybe a gun battery, lighthouse, no idea. But it's all very beat up, obviously, from a couple of uh, dozen years at least. I think this place is like 200 years old, 150 years old, something like that. Um, yeah. So you're not allowed to climb on the rocks. But sometimes shells get stuck in here because the currents sort of converge. So there's lots of little stuff rolling around here on this end in the water. And there's little stuff up on this shoreline. So I'm going to see what all's here. Hello, Apple Murex. And a keeper. Yay! There's another one and somebody else can have that one. <laughs> There's a little guy. Oh, he's alive. He's stuck to a shell. What other goodies? A piece of a chestnut turd. Finish crossbar being is pretty big for that actually, and uh, still alive. Put you in there. Lovely little hinged pink coquina. There, get some of the muck off of that. That's better. Oh my gosh, so much cool stuff here. Let's check the water out. See if there's anything fun in here. Mm. I thought it was an orange shell, just a rock. So 
Earth Clams. What's that? Oh, it's a nutmeg. It's in terrible shape. And it's got some little bivalves in there living in there. Okay, it's a whole little ecosystem of its own. That can stay. I think this would be like a good spot for shells to wash into and get stuck right in here with all this concrete around you. I don't know though. It's neat in here though, that's for sure. Don't climb, but yet there's a set of stairs that almost invites you to. And actually a nice little slice of history for people that are interested in this sort of thing. Look what they made this cement out of. Busted up rocks and shells and shells and more shells. How cool. What's this? Cohogs. Crossbar Venus. I like that purple. Oh, that's gonna be pretty if I take the water wheel to get that white off of there. It's gonna be all purple inside. Nice. Hey. And an auger. It's just a piece of plant stuff. Super. It's a little sea star and it's moving. Yep, that's where he's going. Who wants a critter encounter? <laughs> Put my shells down real quick. He's definitely still alive. A little, little legs still moving, so we're going to go. Yeah. That looks like the turn it over, and does that one have the turquoise in it? Not Oops, so much. The one I had earlier, and I took it out there because it was still moving. Huh. I went, oh, I could see it, sort of. it is. It's moving yeah, its it's little legs. Yeah, moving its little tinies alive. on the bottom. It could live and it could die. You know? yeah. Well, we're going to help it try to live. Yeah. All right, little man. Out here you go. Let's get you in a couple of inches of water, little friend. Don't want you to dry out up there. Nice talking to you too. There you go. Oh, you're upside down, my bad. Let me put you right side up. There, buddy. Oh, awesome. Good day. They should replace every joint in our body. Hey, nice little cantharis. <laughs> cool. <laughs> then we can move around easier, because, well. Yeah, it should be that way, right? Another murex. That's great. Look at the purple inside that. Oh man. Super pretty. Super pretty. What do we got here? And Sarah with a bunch of oysters. Those will all pop right off. It's like we were. Oh, the salt. Yep, I've had it all over. Here it is. Is it? Well, I wish you knew. It is. And I was. Little murex. Packed full of sand. So empty. Fun little stretch of beach so far. 
critter and like cool shells. This is awesome. And I think the nice part about this is there's just not as many people here right now because not everybody is uh, going to fishing. So everybody goes to North Beach to go enjoy the, the bigger, wider beach here. There's not a ton of beach here. As a matter of fact, you can see a heavy amount of erosion in the dunes despite the fact that there's grasses and roots and everything in there to hold it together. So the storms do put a, a bit of a beating on our barrier islands here for sure. Because of that, there's not much beach right here, although there's lots of great little shells. So this may not be maybe everybody's first choice to come to when they come to DeSoto, but definitely give the fishing pier area uh, some attention because there's stuff to be found here. Just pulled that big chunk of sponge out of the water. Kind of thought it was a big urchin, but nope, just a sponge. There's like a pile of shells here. What is that? Ooh. Is that something alive? It is. And it's a sea urchin covered in shells. I can feel his little spines poking through some of those shells and he's alive. He's holding on to the bottom real hard. So we'll just leave him there. An itty bitty teeny tiny sea urchin. Oh my gosh, you got a little, you got good eyes too. There's an apple murex. Yep. And oh, there is there's a, a little... coffee bean melampus. Yeah. And there's a Ooh, there's oh, an good. auger there and a sarah. There's a lot of augers in the crust shells down here. You know, if you just kind of, oh, you're a shell girl too. You bet. Oh my god, I got containers, containers, and it's ridiculous. But I can't help it. I can't. I am thoroughly addicted I, myself, I actually. <laughs> and this is. Well, this is a good addiction, though, don't you think? Well, it's a pretty clean one, and it gets you outside to play, so I would have to agree. I love it. Is this another hermit crab? It is! He just tucked inside that <laughs> auger. Is there one in it? Yep, there's Aww. a hermit in that guy. And there's a nice bubble shell, too. Oh, those are... I've seen a lot of those today. And look at that little it's teeny just, crab. It's... Oh, my word. I... I don't yeah. think he's still... No, he's no, not he's still alive. Dead. He's roached, but... Let's flip them. Get up, buddy. And then we can see them a little. Well, there's not much there to them. Oh! Well, how dare they do that to us? Uh, oh. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Wow. That guy's gorgeous. Oh, and there's a seraph. You got it? I did. Another one of the otters. Another one of the cirrus. Uh, Another little dark auger. Oh, that is the operculum from a chestnut turban. Mermaid money, they call them. Gosh, it's like every time I bend down, I find four or five really cool things. This is awesome. Got a little mini pile here. Auger. 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 Oh, dropped an auger. Sarah. Auger. Auger. Sarah. Auger. Sarah. Auger. <laughs> this is crazy. Auger. Auger. And another. What? An auger. Beautiful little calico clam. I'm actually going to take a knee here. See what other funny things I find. There's another auger there. Wow. There's another one right there. Holy smokes. And that's not all. Little baby apple murex. Oh, there's an operculum there. Still alive. Put them in the damp sand and cover them up. Look at this little proto shell. It's a little baby. Little baby well, horse conch tulip. Who knows? Hard to say it's so small. I'll see if I can magnify it later and identify it. Alright, what other goodies do we have? Here's another serif. Auger. Auger. 
And look at all these little hinge coquinas that are all dried out. Spotted slipper, that's cool. Little Lucene, that's cool. There's another Sarath. Oh, there's a bubble shell. Something stuck in the end of it. There we go. <laughs> there's a bubble stuck inside of a bubble. <laughs> there's a little baby Murex we can keep. Yes. Oh my gosh. I am in tiny town heaven in here. Wow. So many cute littles. Oh. Absolutely stunning. Yowzers. So cool. Put the little guys in here, since I know my bag has a couple of holes in it. And then the bigger one can go in there because he won't fall through. Unbelievable. Another 12 inches over. There's another auger. Nice little cantharis shell. It's hard to tell what kind because he doesn't have any coloring. He's all calcified over right now. But that's okay. Figure it out later. I just can't believe how many great littles I'm finding. Like, I ha I'm really... I'm 30 feet from where the ramp was. I, I haven't hardly gone anywhere. I mean, that little point to here. And I'm finding so much cool little tiny stuff. And the beach is just littered with little shell piles all over. And there's stuff rolling around in the edges. Tuna kit colonies and all kinds of stuff. This is awesome over here. So we got some more augers, clearly. And a little painted egg cockle. How lovely is that? A little tiny serif right there. So much to look at. Oh, and we got a little olive right here. It's actually in one piece. Awesome. The painted egg cockle may or may not make it home. Because they're pretty thin, but we'll see. Rock. And there's a tunica colony. And a sea urchin there, too. Get around the urchin. Get him. And he's still alive. He's holding on to a piece of sand dollar with all his might. Oh, he just dropped it. And he's got some other shells on him up here too. Nice and spiny. Healthy dark color in there with the reddish. So yes, this little guy is alive. There's his mouth parts there under that little piece of seaweed. That's called the Aristotle's Lantern. That's how they eat. So everybody thinks this is the top, but actually... That's really a space, sort of. Put this little guy back out here. So nobody steps on him. Oh, there's another little urchin friend rolling around he can go play with. All right, buddy. Have a good day. Let's see. What else? in there, coquinas. Awesome. Super fun. There's a little murex, a little coquina, another little auger, a canthus, a little serif. Golly. Everywhere I look. Another couple of augers. And I, I keep picking up all these augers, even though it Probably looks sort of boring to keep finding the same shells, but I have a, a project that I've got for those, and I need a lot of them. And no colors, nothing in any of this. It's all coming home. There's a different find for today. Is it whole? It is a little baby whelk. How cute is that guy? Oh, there's a pretty piece of a tulip. Sure would like to find one of those whole not alive. And a little tiny auger. The colors on those augers are great. Dark ones, light ones, medium ones. Super fun. Oh, 
Is there a hermit crab in that guy? There it is! There's a little teeny tiny hermit crab in there. It's there to surprise me. Okay, Bubba. You can stay here. Another otter. And another. And a nice hinged coquina. That guy's got a critter in him, too. That guy's dead something in it. Not anymore. Awesome. And I'm looking up the beach, and I see some more Murexes. So I'm going to go that direction. Just seriously, like, four feet that way. Not sure if you can see it, but I'm basically pointing at an auger and an apple murex. Oh, wow, we got a hinge spiny jewel box that's empty. Oh, adorable. Cute. Nice little calico sky up there. Oh, an auger. Oh, imagine that. I am thrilled with all these augers. It's a very big project that I need them for. It won't be ready for a while. And when it is, I will show it to you. Now that little murex I just picked up, he had the curriculum and looked a little dry. I'm going to put him back in the water and hopefully he makes it. This beach is bananas for the tinies. It's another auger. Another empty murex. Oh my gosh. A nice white scallop. And another serith. And another serith. And another auger. Wow. No way. A limpet, which is my good luck shell. And that is a lentil trap. <laughs> hard to find, hard to spot. Teeny, teeny, tiny little shell. That is super cool. And actually, it's so small, it will fall right through my bag. So I'm going to pack it and some sand inside that calico. Just gotta make sure I don't forget it's there. Awesome. This one keeper looks empty. This is shell stuck down in there. All right, that's a nice one. Oh, nice. Another one. It's alive though, I'm gonna put it back. Oh cool, that's the second alive one I've seen here today. Really? Yeah, there's another one that we found up on the beach over there toward the point and I put them back in oh, front okay. of the rocks. Alright. Yeah. It's all kinds of critters out here today. This is great. We have another little live sea star that someone else had found and was returning to the water. And he washed back in. So I just took him out here a little farther. And I'm gonna leave him out here, where it's about, I don't know, 12, 14 inches deep. Bye, little friend. Have a good day. Well, now that I know that there's murexes here, I kind of would like to find a few more of them. They were just so, so, so cute. It's a nice big bubble shell. Oh, no. It's just half of a bubble. Little Sarah there. Oh, no, it isn't. <gasps> That's awesome. That's a laddered horn snail. Super cool find, kind of on the rare side. Nice. Ooh. 
purple. That's hard to see no to right there. Wow. There's all kinds of birds down here too. How fun. Right there in front of me is an ibis. It's about 15 feet away from me probably. And they just get into that sand and start nibbling around for stuff. <laughs> Really? Pooping for the camera, huh? Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. Look at that keyhole limpet. That's a beauty. Yay! I think that might be a horseshoe crab. It is. Look how thin. Oh, there's an operculum from a tube up there. Very nice. I keep seeing broken tulips, and I've seen an alive one. Kind of hoping to find one to go home with. <laughs> Great orange way back there. Oh yeah, baby little rough scallop. Love that color. I'm hoping for a tulip. So I'm gonna go a little bit closer to the rocks and further that way and see what I find. And then I'll cross over over there, see if there's anything on the other side. And then we'll probably be done for today. Nice big olive, yeah. And, oh, there's an alive apple murex. There's this little, little body in there. Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it's empty. It was an air bubble kind of trapped under there in some sand and it made it look like it was moving. I shook it out, nothing. So that guy can come home. Awesome. Yay. Okay, I sat and I took a break and sat down and I see tons of shells over there, pieces and everything on the other side of the jetty. I think I'm gonna get in over there and look around some more. And then I'm going to make my way back and call it a day because I macked it on the tiny shells over here. But I'm down here at the big Fort DeSoto fishing pier. There might actually be some fun stuff over on the other side. Kind of hoping. Ooh. Can't get at it from this angle though. Gotta go around. shells in the rocks. There's not a lot of stuff near the rocks. And I don't see anything worth grabbing over here. Big pieces of stuff all over the place. Wow. Heart cockle piece there. Big whelk in these rocks. Just all busted up. tulip today. All I've seen is broken and smashed ones. Oh wow. Okay. I asked for a tulip. I see the words broken and smashed. And what do I spy? A huge tulip shell that's broken and smashed and wedged right in here. I don't even know if I can get that out. This isn't that pretty good. But look at the size of that tulip though. It would be great if I could get that out of there. Even though it's broken, I would still have some fun with this. But man, it is packed 
like right in there. I can't even can't even get the sand around it out. So I guess it stays. Here a little urchin friend wash in. He's still alive. He's got a little shell collection here. So I'm gonna put him back in the water. Alright, little dude. Take you out here a little ways. And he has himself a little uh, tegulus shell and a little crossbarred Venus. Okay, buddy. Nice collection. Oh, you lost the tegulus. Enjoy your day, little friend. If there's any shells under this walkway. Mm, not much. Not much to find under here. All right, then what about up there? Nope, I don't see any shells up there either. All right, so time to turn around and. Oh, that one came up high. All right, time to turn around and head back the way I came and get back to the car. Oh, that's a pretty little whelk top. I think I'd like to cut that for a pendant. Nice spiny jewel box. Look at that orange on there. That's awesome. Well, there's a shell pile here. Oh, is that one of my purple inside shells? Nope, oh, that's just a little slipper snail. Not much in this pile. Oh, this little guy's sitting on the rock. Oh, he's broken. He's seriously been sitting there baking in the sun. There's a high line here up by the dunes too, but there's so much plant material in it that I can't even see anything in there. So I'm gonna go back to that little place where I came onto the beach was, see if I can find a couple more murexes, and then we'll head out. There's another little chestnut turbo. Very cool. What's that? Hey, it's a little cantharus. Very cool. And a little auger. Nice. How cute. Oh. How broken. Hmm. The color is pretty enough. Maybe I'll just take it and cut it. It's actually tunicates. What is it? Tunicate colony. See? Hard. Oh, it looks like a jellyfish. So what is this stuff anyway? This stuff is called sea pork. Let's take a look at this website from Atlas Obscura and talk about these little guys for a second. These are colonies of organisms like bryozoans or corals 
and they clump together and they live together and they filter feed and what have you. It's just that their form maybe isn't as uh, pretty as coral would be. Um, actually, the texture of it is very much like cartilage. It's uh, hard and it's slippery. And uh, right after we get a storm, sometimes we get these big chunks like these pinkish and grayish ones. Other times we get little smaller ones that look almost like truffles. They're kind of a brownish pink and they're about the size of a, a slice of a kiwi maybe. But anyway, that's what these little guys are, seaport. Yep, it's a, they're, they're little like microorganisms, organisms band all together and they filter feed and stuff like that. Oh, good to know. So, sea pork, it's what they, they call it sometimes. Because I see them, they almost look like a sponge. They're in the water. There's yeah, there are a bunch of them around here, actually. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're pretty safe right now. Jellyfish season is actually more toward the summer. It's the ultralight guy. There's three or four of these cats that come flying by here, past the grill, the soto, and just have those little ultralights, those little fans, like you see on an airboat behind them, with essentially a parachute. And they'll come down, fly low over the water and low over the beach, just check it out. <laughs> I think I would like one of those. That looks like total fun. Oh, I bent down to get this coquina. And look at the little drill shell hiding right behind it. That's cool. And so many great tinies here today. I didn't even put them all on video because it was just so many. Just sort of scanning around, see if there's anything I missed. Going back to the car at this point. Broken. That one is broken too. That's a pretty good size Maverick shell though. It's kind of cool. And that one's still closed up. Piece of whelk. That's kind of a shame. A couple more of these augers right here. Dark one, and there too, and there, and another hinged pair. Ooh, and there's a little bruised NASA. How cool! Up here and grab some colors. It's a really pretty calico scallop. Nice sunray Venus clam. Almost like a purplish pink to it. Beat up murex. That guy can stay because I already have some nice ones. And a little auger. Right on. Mm, look at that pretty coral finger. Oh, dropped it. That's beautiful. Really nice. No way. Another lentil trap. That is beautiful. What a cool find. Much bigger than my earlier one. That's about, uh, probably about as big as this guy gets, actually. Cute, cute tiny shell. Oh boy. Another pretty little murex. He's a little chipped on his aperture, but that's okay. And what else is next to me here? And Sarah and an auger. All right. Little baby banded tulip. Sweet. How adorable that guy is. All right, one more shell for the day. Look at this guy. That is another one of those laddered horn snails. Don't find these really very often. Always excited to see them. And right next to where it was, a beautiful drill shell. And on that note, we're going to say goodbye to Fort DeSoto today. Some great little rare shells to finish off our day with. Awesome. Let's go home and get this stuff cleaned up. Absolutely beautiful scenery, beautiful wildlife, and fantastic shells today. All to be had at a really great little county park.
What a gorgeous spot. You can see where the people all are up there, where those towers are. That's where we were at before. But uh, found so much great stuff today. It looks like this is going to end up having to be two videos. And as we're leaving the beach, of course, I mentioned, if you don't have a good day, you can stop here and look. Except down here, right here. Little guy there, there. Two cones right there. Wow. Super cool. And there's another one. Oh. Another cone right there. A couple of these guys and a moon. And another moon. Wow. Another little cone. And another one. Yeah, this is kind of awesome in the tiny department down here. Between the stuff that's on the beach and the stuff that's off the beach, you can go home with a nice little collection of stuff. full of tinies we got from Fort DeSoto South. My goodness. There's fossils in here. There's all kinds of stuff I don't normally find. And even these special little guys. These are wental traps. We'll talk about them in a second. Let's go around the table and see what we have. Alright, so you can see we just have some crossbar venus, some olives, a couple of limpets, a really nice dark calico clam, some of our scallops, a couple bits and pieces of some whelks, and some of those purple mussels I like. Look at all of those little guys. These are all apple murexes. I'm going to put my finger in here so you see the size of them. Some of them are small and some of them are bigger, but these were super cool. We've got some coral here, one of our Sunray Venus and a broad rib cardita, spiny jewel box, an egg cockle, and a hinge kitten paw, which is kind of cool. And we've got these guys over here. This is a whelk, and this is, look at how tiny that little whelk is. How awesome is that? Worm snail, nice hinge spiny jewel box, another little kitten paw. All right, so these guys are in the cantharis department. We've got some tinted cantharis and some rib cantharis here. A painted egg cockle, a trap door for a banded tulip. That's the operculum from a tulip. Baby horse conch, a coffee bean melampus, which I very rarely find these. They're around, I just don't find them. That is an operculum to a chestnut turban. Look at all these cute little bruised Nassaws. These are all fossils. And I don't know if you can see this guy, but he's like the moon snail precursor to the gaudy nautica, this guy here. This one's called a semi. This one is a spindle. I actually thought it was a horse conch at first, but it's a spindle, a broken spindle with some iron oxide coloring on it. That was kind of neat. Boring turret snail, some nice little cones in here as well actually and we have a couple of chestnut turbans and some seraphs and some augers some bubbles a couple of tiny tulips and now we're going to get into the smaller stuff we have all these cute little coquinas one of those scallops that's the 
the longer scallop. That's half of a purple tagelus. I unfortunately broke the other half. It was hinged. It was nice. There's actually a little loose seam right here. Some button snails. These are thick rib drills. This is a gulf oyster drill. That is a laddered horn snail. And look at these teeny tiny little guys. Those are Humphrey's Wentel Traps. These are the first two Wentel Traps I've ever actually found. I'm super excited about those. This little guy is a bit of a mystery. First of all, he's super duper tiny. He's going to be kind of hard to get into focus here. Um, I believed that because it was white on the tip and yellow, that this could be a little teeny itty bitty little tiny horse conch just starting to grow. Um, I posted a picture online and some people thought it was a teeny tiny banded tulip but I don't know that tulips are yellow at that size. I do know that the horse conchs and the rib cantharis can actually be that color with a white tip. So that one is a mystery but I'm for now I'm gonna just call him a little baby horse conch for lack of a better term. And these, oh gosh, look at that. Look at how small, I couldn't even believe I found them, they were so small. To keep them safe, to bring them home, I packed them inside of sand, inside of some calico scallops, so that they wouldn't fall out of anything. But I'm so excited about lentil traps. Oh my gosh, they're so, so tiny and so, so cute. So this was a really nice day for tinies up at Fort DeSoto. I spent most of that afternoon basically just sitting on the sand where the brake line was, just above where the water washed things up, and all these tiny little shells were just everywhere. I can't get over this teeny tiny little apple murexes. Oh my gosh, so cute. So this was a special, special little shelling trip for me, especially because of these Wentel traps. I'm in love with those. I don't find them almost ever. And uh, most people were astonished that I found any of them at all at Fort DeSoto, having not usually seen them there. But yep, I'm, that's where I found them and I'm super, super excited about them. I'll go ahead and put my finger in there so you get an idea of just how small we're talking unbelievable so this pile of stuff is going to be a little hard to pick things out to work with um i don't know exactly what i'm going to do with some of these small shells like this little guy and these little guys but they may end up in bottles because they're just too small to do anything else with um and the same thing with some of those little tiny apple murexes gosh they're so cute though aren't they and look at this itty bitty teeny tiny little whelk oh my gosh how cute just adorable and bruise nasa's oh my gosh i have a new shell that i love it's the bruise nasa i've never found these before either and found it looks like about eight or nine of them up there at desoto so yeah that was pretty exciting So here we have some stuff from DeSoto South from the same day trip where I hit two beaches in one day. Uh, as you notice, there was probably a lot more stuff for the DeSoto North cutting and drilling and whatnot because things were bigger up there. And most of the stuff I found at DeSoto South was actually pretty tiny stuff. I got a lot of augers and serifs and whatnot from that day as well. Uh, I did pull out a few things here that I did want to work with. Some scallops and a perculum. A couple of really cute egg cockles here. Um, this egg cockle I love because something drilled a hole in it and that's like a perfect little spot to set a rhinestone. Isn't that cute? So the only thing I don't think I'm actually going to do anything with now that I've seen this dry and wet and everything else is I pulled this piece out just to cut that top off of there. But honestly, um... I don't know, this thing's in pretty ragged shape, so I think that's just going to go in my flower bed. Set that aside, and I'll spend my time 
drilling these guys and then cutting and drilling this piece as well. I'm going to try to do this through my uh, magnifier screen and see if this works where I can see and the camera can see. It's a little tricky. But you can see I have some rhinestones over here all laid out. And it's in the just the, the rainbow of the seven chakra colors. And I have this really cool egg cockle shell right here. And it's really, really gorgeous. I'll take it away from the magnifier and you can see it for a second. It came naturally with a little drill hole in it. I thought, oh, what a nice place to set a rhinestone. And then I thought, whoa, it'd actually be really cool, like with a line of stones going through it, even though there's only this, this one hole. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make a little straight line of, hole of uh, rhinestones down through here. And there's our uh, hole at the top to suspend it by. And I hope this works because this stuff is tough to see. I've got some glue for this little dish that I decoupage and it came out bad. So I just use it as a glue disc dish right now. So you can see there's some of that little Gorilla Glue there. And what I'm gonna do is take this little needle tool. And let's, first off, we're gonna put some glue inside there to hold the rhinestone. And this light blue color is for the throat chakra. So I think that's what I'm gonna put in the hole. I hope this is coming out on the camera. Ah. Also, not left-handed. Like, at all. Oh, look how cute that sits in there. <laughs> all right. So now I'm just gonna space with two above and the other four below it. So it makes this nice little line and then this will be on the necklace designed to sit over your throat with the throat chakra highlighted. And then your throat chakra will be highlighted here. Whee! All right, I'm stopping the time lapse already here because I noticed that as this glue is leaving like a little raised ridge, the stones were sliding around a little bit. So I'm going to take and clean that up and then continue working my way down. And it's gonna be a little trickier because the shell drops off this way. So I'm gonna to have to work slower because the stones are gonna to wanna to slide down. I have my stones placed and hopefully not too much excess glue here. And this is gonna be getting a clear coat over it to protect the little rhinestones too. I'm just trying to keep them where they belong and not sliding around too much. The less glue, the, the easier that is.
can see a little bit extra there. I'm going to pick up this brush, just feather it out a little. And then once I put the clear coat over it, it'll be better. I just don't want like a big lump of glue around the rhinestone. That'll look terrible. All right, let's take it from around the back. Oh, that is so cute. Let's try it under this light instead. Nice. I like it. Get the little magnifier is making it look a little insane. I'm hoping. Hoping this works. There. That's super cute. I have been trying to decide since I shot this footage whether or not to separate DeSoto North and DeSoto South in the making jewelry aspect of things. And I think I'm going to do both of them in one run. Just to because I've already got the stuff out and I'm working on things and making things. Plus, I have company coming, and they're going to be here for a few weeks, and I may not be able to get as much done while company's here. So, while I have the time today, while it's quiet, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger. What you see in front of me right now is stuff from DeSoto South Beach, down by the fishing pier. And this bag over here is from the north end of the beach, a different uh, shelling trip. And what goes with this bag of North stuff is all of those really cute little uh, cyclonella shell pairs that I decoupage. They're off drying right now. They've gotten three coats of sealer. So I think I'm going to assemble some other stuff while I'm waiting for those to dry. And while I'm waiting for this little beauty to dry, this is the egg cockle that I put the rhinestones on. Oh, I think that's so pretty. I just love it. So I kind of can't wait to hang that and see how it comes out. I'm hoping what I want is for this to kind of go diagonal a little bit, not necessarily straight up and down. So let's see if that works. Well, I guess it kind of does go straight up and down. I can live with it. But yeah, I sort of wanted the, the line to sort of follow the, the shell shape and sort of swoop this way. Maybe I should have built a little curve into it. I can try it on another one. Because it happens that I also have another egg cockle shell. Now the other shell didn't have that cute little hole where this one did. It's a little smaller. But yeah, I might actually make two of these. I might make another one just like this, and then I'll be able to seal them both together and hang them both together. So, I'm going to set that aside for right now, because i got to get the glue and the glue dish back out. In the meantime, I went ahead and oiled the stuff. This is the Soto South. This is the Soto North. Oh, and unfortunately, when I was moving things around, somewhere along the line, that adorable little calico got broken. So bummed about that. I thought it was so cute. And since they're so hard to drill uh, without ruining them, I don't know if I'll be able to work with another one of those anytime soon, aside from the ones I prepared already. We will uh, have to see what happens. And I guess I'm on kind of a... maybe a spiritual kick or something. I thought this sort of reminded me of a particular Tibetan symbol so I was gonna wire wrap this guy and I was gonna put some of these other cute little shells paired up with things this one's beautiful all by itself love that really nice for a pendant I have a really cute calico clam that had also some interesting color where it was above and below the sediment a line form it got dark up here and light down there thought that was really neat so that'll be cute and let's see, let's take and dump out this stuff from DeSoto North while I'm at it. I 
Got a couple more of those Venus clams. Had the holes in them. Let's try those guys out. That nice big fat olive. And then these smaller ones, which are going together as a set. What else do we have? Oh yeah, I cut open uh, some of those augers to make more little cones out of them because they're just so cute. It's really pretty pear from cut from that whelk. Those are going to be nice earrings. I like those. That three-piece set that all came from the same shell. Those little guys. So yeah, I think I actually am going to mash up uh, the jewelry from both trips into pieces that work together. So this one is really pretty. We got a this guy here, is he a little big? Yeah, he's a little big for an ice cream cone. But I also had that little orange shell. Gosh, where did that go, actually? That cute little scallop is missing. I had a little orange scallop that had a hole drilled in it. I oiled it when I was doing the other shells. Jeez, I guess I must have dropped it. Hmm. Well, that's kind of a shame because I thought it would make a good ice cream cone topper. And that Morton cockle could too. And honestly, even that one just looks like you got a fat scoop of melting ice cream instead of a small one, that's all. Anyway, I'm going to play around with these real quick. And I'm going to see if I can locate that tiny little scallop shell that I appear to have lost. And then I'll get started. You guys don't get to see me do this very often because generally when I'm making jewelry for one of my videos, it's all out of the shells just from that trip. But because I've got an interesting mix of stuff here, and I have some smaller shells that I am uh, messing with, I am going to add a couple of things to make some of these pendants a little more punched up, if we will. So over here, I have a bag of stuff that I've cut a while ago. It's all from those giant Atlanta cockles, those big Dan Heinings cockles, the beach bowls. There's what one looks like before it grows up, right there. And I've cut some really neat shapes and chunks out of these. I have broken pieces that I find on the beach because I just think the colors on them are really cool. So what I'm looking for is some light dark contrast, some size difference, some textural difference, anything, you know, just to kind of make things look a little, a little different, something new. And I have a number of these pieces that are all cut and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is pick what do I think looks best with what. I love this game. This is such a fun game. All right, so we have a, a yellow and brown, and boy, that one's really delicate. If this holds up, ew, I'll be amazed, because that's a thin shell. But we're gonna try. Oh, God, we're not gonna make it far if I drop it and break it. Well, damn. Okay, so I dropped that really cute little painted egg cockle, and while I was looking around on the floor for it, rolled my office chair right over it and smashed it into pieces. I take a look at the pattern and what am I putting with it? And I'm looking for like a big punchy difference. For example, this guy has that nice little reddish brown. That'll look really cool mounted like that on that orangey one or on that one. And this guy here, being wider, maybe he goes here at the top of this. That looks kind of cool. I could put him on the top of these, this skinnier one. I don't know. That's a little too close, matchy-matchy in the brown, so I don't like that. I'm going to kick that out. I like it with this. Now it gets sort of lost on that too. 
So this is what I do, process of elimination. I just stack things on top of each other and see if I like how they look. And when I do, then I'm done. Okay, there we have it. Two backing pieces for these two shells. Everything is all set out with all its little collections of hardware. I'm just deciding right now between the Neobium and gold silver with some of these up here. But I might use these for like this pair right here. These guys I'm going to do in a supplement video. These are all going to be getting rhinestones and some additional things done to them. That's going to be mounted inside of there like a little shrine. That guy's getting wire wrapped. That guy needs to be sealed. These guys are going to get some stones. These guys. So they will be in a separate little supplement video. Right now I'm going to concentrate on getting all of this stuff put together. And I'm just going to show you on um, these. Look at that, how the light comes through there. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I just love that. I think that's so pretty. And I had one pair that didn't come out. I'll show you why. My paintbrush was too wet when I was doing the blue edging on that. And see how it ran and sort of seeped. So it messed up the edge. So I will be keeping these for me because... You know, I don't mind, but they're not quite perfect, so. Most of what I have out here, as you can see, is earrings. Uh, I've got a set here with the olives and a set here with the whelks to do as well. And also, I had thought I wanted to take some charms and put them in some of these little decoupage guys. And I wanted dolphins. How cute is that? The trouble is, I only have one charm. So, <laughs> no dolphins this time around, but I will be trying to get some more so I can make some more of these because these are really fun. And I got a lot of cyclonella shells from that trip to DeSoto, so plenty of them. But these are also really pretty too with these little hearts. So that's going to be our little Heart of the Ocean pair of earrings right there. Love those. All right, well, we've looked at everything now. I guess it's time to get to work. Here we go. Got my Pandora going, my spa music. And got everything laid out. Let's get to work. Once again, we are out of time. However, come on back for the next couple of weeks because not only am I going to finish showing you uh, the rest of the DeSoto trip, which was DeSoto North, but then all the cool stuff that got made from all that stuff. I think it turned out to be, I want to say 10 pairs of earrings, 10 pendants, and two sets. I think, I, I think, I'm not sure. I'll have to take a look. I almost forgot my big announcement too. Uh, I figured out what the community part of my <laughs> profile on YouTube is for. I'm such a noob. God. Anyway, I made an announcement in it and I just wanted to say that since Mother's Day is coming and I have some really nifty things that make some great Mother's Day gifts, if you come to my store, my online store, and I'm going to have the, the site name right here below for you so that you can check it out, you will be receiving 20% off for Mother's Day. So come on over to the store and get um, something cool from the Gulf Shore of Florida. The DeSoto South items will start showing up in the store probably sometime late this weekend so that you can get a chance to go check those out too. Oh, there's one puppy. There's the other puppy. And all three of us are signing up for right now, but we'll see you next week for some more DeSoto fun. Thanks for watching. Come on back. Oh,